shall present all for us. I'd like to welcome everyone, but I'd like to do a little bit something a little bit different. Just a minute. I've told Jason that we need to keep the program short, and I did it for a reason because I need a few minutes. Um, I would like to have all of the retirees stand, and any of the wives of the retirees that are not here with us to stand, please. Willie Bridges. Thank y'all for coming. Glad to have you. I grew up in running around the firehouse and looking up to y'all and and what you did and y'all were definitely the the foundation that this great department's built on today. And so I'm glad y'all are here and able to participate to the current firefighters and officers of this department. I don't know of any other council or town manager anywhere around that can sleep at night and be as comfortable that anything that comes our way in this town can be handled. And you know, people ask me all the time, what's so great about y'all's departments? And I say, well, I tell you, our fire department, it don't matter if you're stuck in it, on it, under it, or dangling from it, they can get you out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they're the most skilled in firefighting of anybody I know. And I'm certainly proud of y'all. I brag on y'all all the time. And uh, I appreciate what you do. Um, Chief Barbie and Chief Axon, Chief Dean are just the most outstanding leaders that I can ever think of in anywhere around here. And I think, to me, to groom a department with so many people who are as talented and well-trained, these guys as leaders of this fire department have really done something. And uh, I think it's, you know, when I, years ago, and a lot of the retirees will know, you know, everybody kind of had a specialty. And when we'd go out there with the rescue squad, you know, you knew if somebody was stuck in a car, you wanted so-and-so to come help you extricate. Or if somebody was stuck on top of a water tank, you knew who could do it. And, and it's comforting to me to know that it doesn't matter which one of you comes, y'all can all do it. And you're all trained and you've all put in the hours and you've all gained the certifications and it's not like it used to be where we, where there was a select few group of people that, that had the skill. Now everybody's got the skill. And um, that's something I'm really proud of and proud of the department and, uh, and the leadership. I think your, your leaders have, are what have taken the department to where it's at today. And I thank them and wish y'all a Merry Christmas. do for this part process here is we're going to start the battalion chiefs and we're going to call them up and as I call the battalion chiefs up I will call the person presenting the helmet just as a quick refresher the ones presenting the helmets just come grab the helmet um, from Chief Barbie Chief Atkinson okay and then go stand beside your significant other but do not give the helmet to them yet we're going to get all the promotees up all ranks and then at one time we will present the helmets at once okay all right, Battalion Chief, Mark Morris. Mark's been with us since May of 2004. Uh, he started off as a part-time uh, firefighter and was hired pretty much as rose, rose, risen through the ranks, presenting his helmet to his wife, Leah. <laughs> Is that for Mark or Leah? <laughs> Andrew Shaw. Andrew Shaw's been with us since November 2005. Also, as a part-timer, he pretty much worked, worked his way through the ranks. Presenting his helmet is his wife, Ashley. <clears throat> Matt Sutphin. Matt's been with us since November 2005, again, as a part-timer and, and worked his way through the ranks. Presenting his helmet is his wife, Sarah.
captains. Chris Carter. Chris has been with us since May 2007. May join, uh, Chris joined us in May 2007 after serving in the Marine Corps and a couple of tours in Iraq. Presenting his helmet to his wife, Rebecca. Daryl Harris. Daryl's been with us since November 2008. Again, as a part-timer. Then we got hired full-time and risen through the ranks. Presenting his helmet to his wife, Lindsay. Joshua Spivey. Josh has been with us since May 2007. Part time, he got hired at Cary full time, been there a few years. Now he's coming over to us full time. Presenting his helmet is his wife, Katie. Our fire equipment operators or engineers or drivers, Jonathan Braswell. Jonathan joined us in November 2007 as part-time. Got hired by the city of Raleigh. Been there a couple of years and joined us full-time. Presented his helmet to his girlfriend, Jeannie, and daughter, Layla. Kyle Driver. Kyle's been with us in May 2014. He also had some time with Cleveland Fire Department prior to coming to us. Presenting his helmet to his Girlfriend Bethany. Stacy Turner. Stacy actually is uh, new to Clayton as far as uh, he was not hired for part time. He actually was Johnson County EMS. That's why he's a familiar face as a paramedic. He's uh, been in the fire service a little right at 20 years, brings a pretty good wealth of knowledge to us. Uh, presenting his helmet to his wife, Jennifer. I had to squeeze in. Anthony Bonero. Anthony joined us in May 2014. Presenting his helmet, this is his father, Jimmy Bonero. You can come here in the front too. People don't need to see me. And our final FEO or engineer, Jeff Williams. Jeff has been with us since November 2008 as a part-timer. He worked a little bit at Fuquay Fire Department and is, and is joining us, presenting his helmets as Son Mason. Along with our battalion chiefs, our firefighters, these are two historical positions for Clayton Fire Department. Uh, being full-time, going to be full-time staff, so um, the firefighters here will be assigned to Rescue One. Uh, first one's Corey Beard. Corey's been with us since May 2014. Presenting his helmet to his son, Spencer. I, I knew Corey really wanted this job because he came to me one day and was like, hey, do you have some extra pulleys and some ropes and stuff? I'm going on vacation. I want to practice some. I'm thinking, he really wants this job if he's going to be doing rigging stuff on vacation. But anyway, um, Anthony Marino. Anthony's been with us since May 2014. Anthony brings uh, some knowledge from a volunteer fire department up north. Something I didn't even realize until his interview. It was pretty shocking. Uh, presenting his helmet is his wife, Cheryl. And the only one that could not join us this evening was Ryan Tillerson. Uh, he's, had a, he's in a mandatory class this evening, so he regrets to try to get out of it, but it was that or other things. So at this time, helmet presenters, you can present your helmets to your promotee. Go ahead and put it on their head and mess the hair up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your 2016, we'll call them graduates and promotees.
they all go in effect officially January 7th, 8th, and 10th. So uh, thank you all significant others and to the ones that assisted in the processes. This has definitely been a, a career changer for, for me personally and for Clayton Fire Department historically. Thank you all. Five years, Jamie Gilchrist. <laughs> Kevin Stansel, five years. <laughs> Cameron Thornton, he couldn't be with us tonight. He has five years also. Also, Alan Al Wolf. Okay. <laughs> Next for ten years of service, Mitch Boyet. Josh Holliman. Oh, okay. George Pettiford, he couldn't be with us tonight either. Okay. Travis Price. Stephen Rinkin. They're all working tonight. Ryan Wood. And for 25 years of service, Jane Mehill. Real quick statement. Uh, Jamie made the comment the other day, he's like, man, he said, I've been on the fire department longer than my captain's been alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be presenting the medical life saves for 2016. It was for Code Blue at the Bryan Center. Chief Jason Dean. <laughs> Firefighter Ephraim Santos. <laughs> Captain Matt Sutphin. <laughs> Firefighter Anthony Bonero. Engineer Paul Zeiss. Moving right on into most training, and those that are not familiar, we take our most training and do a part-time, full-time. 
Uh, full-time personnel had to maintain 240 hours plus 24 uh, minimum hours, and a part-time had to maintain 120 plus 24 through an EMT. Uh, both of these uh, recipients exceeded 600 hours. Um, I don't have the exact number, but uh, just an insane amount of training that these uh, personnel do. So what we'll do first, <clears throat> get our trophies. <clears throat> and all these recipients as well, their names are also put on the, the plaques. Um, station one. So most training for part-time, Anthony Venero. Full-time loves training. Uh, this gentleman, I ain't gonna say gets picked on sometimes, but uh, I think it's pretty obvious, you know, the amount of classes he takes and initiative he has. And not only does he go out and do these trainings, but he also brings back and makes it a valuable asset to Clayton Fire Department, the ones he works for and the customers we serve. And I think that's pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, Full-time is Chris Carter. someone who had shows the initiative, went the extra mile, and displayed an all-in attitude. In times past, the Rookie of the Year has two years or less of service. This year, we have extended it to three. This year's Rookie of the Year is Firefighter Corey Beard. Officer of the Year. I'll be presenting the Officer of the Year. Uh, the Officer of the Year is somebody that's either a captain or higher in rank with the Clayton Fire Department. Uh, this person is somebody that goes above and beyond the standard of what is expected of an officer on a day to day basis. Uh, the 2000 16 officer of the year is Tony Exon. I've got the honor and privilege of presenting the Firefighter of the Year. <clears throat> this award is not just to a firefighter, it can be any rank um, with the department. Typically they have more than two years experience. They um, are pretty much the, the go-to person of the year that's shown a lot of initiative, a lot of drive, a lot of uh, Selfless acts. <clears throat> this person also goes on and represents the fire department in other aspects, uh, American Legion, um, other venues throughout the town. And, and this year's recipient, I, I think we'll all agree, um, personally, um, this person, you know, professionally and personally, 
past helped me, me who I am. I think it's very evident that this person also has the town's best interest uh, in his mind and heart. But as far as you know, me personally, from command staff, you know, challenges me, uh, challenges us, and supports all the way down to uh, the bottom ranks. Even though we don't necessarily, I say we as a department, you know, when you put 50, 60 people together, you're going to have disagreements and, and things here and there that you may not necessarily agree with. But overall, I think everybody agrees that the overall objective of this person is to make Clayton Fire Department the best. And quite simply, we are. And it's big kudos to this person, Fire Chief Lee Barbie. I feel, I think Jason said it tonight when, when they talked about what the town council sees and, and other people. Um, it's been a struggle over the years to get us where we're at, but it's took a lot of people to get us there. Uh, a lot of people in the department, a lot of people in the community, uh, the help from town staff and other departments, right? You, you could just keep right on naming them. Um, I thank all of you. I didn't see this coming, I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> Clayton's in my heart, not only the, the department, but the, the community. I came here as an outsider, but I've always felt that I was at home, and I've always tried to greet the ones that come in and try to make them feel at home. And I think that's something that we've done in this department over the years as we change. Is um, I try to recognize the resources that people bring to us, and we try to take advantage and tap onto these every time we do a recruitment and bring people in. I'm the last one to ask him, and Jason will tell you, I, I put in, he does this process, and he's done a good job, and the department has bought in and helped with it, but I asked everybody when they come, what can you offer us? I do the last interview. They had their assessment, but I do it. I ask these guys, what can you bring us? What can you offer? What resources do you have? Because I want them. I want those resources. I want us to be diverse. I want us to be able to do, I want all of us, to go, that goes on a call to do the right thing and do what needs to be done to help those people. And we've took on a lot of things over the year. We've took on medical responders. We've took on rescue. It's a lot for these guys to do, but they do it. And I thank all of you. Thank you. <coughs> 